We're going to be doing a little bit of a around the house uh, honeydew list. And we have about a 40 year old uh, landscaping that was done here. And it has some nice brick, nice concrete. But due to hydrolysis, just water movement and also plant invasion, uh, you end up with some cracks. And we're going to talk about today how to easily correct this so that you get it looking nice like this again. You don't really need much tools at all. You just need a little bit of time. We'll go over what tools you're going to need. Here is a <coughs> repair that was done previously. Uh, this is the this is the original material. This is um, some material that was put in that uh, doesn't quite match in terms of color and also not really matching in terms of uh, consistency. It was um, probably had a little bit of uh, rubberized material added to it. But we're just going to be using regular mortar the, like what was used uh, originally to fix the cracks. And I think it'll look a lot better. For repair, we just need a few things. This is a uh, company, Quickcrete. It's a huge company making concrete products. This is just called Mortar Mix. This is a 10 pound bag. You can get this at like Home Depot or Lowell's or you can even have it sent to you online. And this is probably about 10 bucks for one of these. You need a couple of containers, um, one fresh water and a sponge. This kind of sponge is not ideal. They actually make one that's uh, done for masonry or, or bricklaying. This will work for today. And this is a bowl where we're going to mix the mortar in with some water. So we're going to just pour a little bit in. And then you can use a trowel. You can even, for these little cracks, you can even use your hand to do this. Mix in some. I'm trying to get a certain consistency. Don't want it to be too wet or too dry. So you just have to play with it a little bit. So that's a lot of water, so we're gonna put in more more powder. And as you're working with this, um, if you have a lot mixed and then it's taking a while, it's a hot day, and it's starting to set up. You can just add some water and stir it up again, kind of like you would, they do with uh, when they deliver concrete to a site, and it'll it'll stay good. So you just want to mix it really good <coughs> with the water. It should feel kind of like clay when you're when you got it right. <coughs> But the good thing about this mortar mix is <clears throat> instead of uh, getting the pre-mixed stuff, just buying it in powder, it's cheaper. And it does allow you to get a consistency that you really want to work with that fits what you're trying to do. Since I'm trying to get into mainly small cracks, I'll be using a little bit more of a watery consistency than you would use if you were like laying brick. So it's a little bit too watery. <clears throat> One thing to be aware of when if you use your hands without gloves is that this stuff does tend to leach a lot of moisture out of your skin. So you don't want to do it for too long if you're just doing it without gloves. And you might want to put some kind of moisturizing on uh, soon after. So now we're getting a little closer to what we want. We just want to make sure that all the water is mixed with all the mortar mix. Still a little bit too watery. A little bit more powder. And just, just keep playing with it until you get consistency that feels right. Alright, that's pretty good. So, I'm going to mix that up a little bit more and we're going to use it to fill in some of the cracks. Now, if you do fill in these cracks, you're going to help minimize how much the brick and all is going to move apart over time. So, it's really good to try to catch this fairly early. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a crack here. 
So I'm just going to take a pinch of this stuff and move it across the surface of the crack and then I just use my finger to work it in and it seals it really quick. It should only take you a few minutes to do a small crack like that. You want to consider like um, when I get this all done, I fill in the crack, I want to try to get the the level of the mortar to kind of match what was there before. So we can see this mortar is up pretty high on the brick. There's not much of a, of a depression. So we could add material because our goal is to try to get it close to what was there before. So pretty easy to do. You want to minimize um, how much extra mortar gets on the things you don't want to get on like uh, on this nice concrete here so you could if you wanted to you could put masking tape to create a nice line uh, the other idea too is that when you're done you can use the sponge to, to easily get rid of and you have a while before it sets up you could have probably a good 15 minutes where you can still do that So this is going to be an easy job, <clears throat> and <clears throat> it'll not only will it's you know going to look a lot better, but if you don't do it, it just you know you're going to have bricks missing, and it's going to look it's going to look really bad. So you have to think about these cracks; they're not just like a centimeter deep, but they go down as deep as that brick. So if you can, if you can on, on these kind of cracks, if you can just put a little bit of material in and kind of push it down in the crack and then do a little bit more and just fill that crack completely, that'd be better. Because if it's just uh, enough to kind of patch it, then it'll probably show another crack on you pretty quick. Because it's basically a hollow unsupported underneath where you did the repair and it won't, won't last very long. If you have uh, like some plants growing, some grass growing in the crack or weeds or something, it'd be good to try to get that out before you do the patching. If you have a lot of loose mortar, like broken mortar in there, it'd be beneficial to try to get that stuff out if you can. It's not, crit not, not a deal breaker, but it should help. So I'm just trying to see wherever there's an open seam, try to fill that with the mortar. And that's so that mainly water can't sneak in there. The water gets in there and that water pressure can cause these cracks, especially if that water would then freeze up if you're in a really cold climate. That doesn't really happen here in California. You don't get too many too many really cold uh, 32 degree Fahrenheit or below days where, where water freezes. But one of the phenomena of water when it freezes it is it expands. So that's what bursts pipes. But it can also get into concrete or mortar like this and it can expand and then cause a crack. So now we've basically got the mortar in where we want it about the right level. I put a little bit more right here and now uh, to make it look a little better I'm going to use a, a moist sponge. You don't want this sponge to be too wet but just moist is good and this is just clear water so I'm going to put the sponge in there, wring it out and then I'll use it <clears throat> to cut in on the side here So, get rid of some of the imperfections. <clears throat> also, just getting your finger wet with the water and then going over it will make it very smooth. What you don't want is a really rough look when you're done, but <clears throat> if we look at the original work, you know, I, I am not trained in this. This is just <clears throat> cursory information, but a professional 
can put this stuff down easily, quickly, and it looks very smooth. And so that's our goal, is to try to get try to get smoothed out. So water helps us in that regard. We can use it it's like a uh, something like we use in when we're painting to cut material to make it to make it smoother. We get the sponge wet. You can also do it with the sponge. The trick is not to get it too wet. Kind of lightly go over that area you just you just repaired. And the good thing about this mortar is when it dries, it'll change color a little bit. It'll be end up a little bit lighter, but I think it's going to be a really good match. So it'll be hard to tell where the repair was done. So I don't want to get this kind of rough thing going on here, so I'm going to go over it with my spur. Smooth it out. And you know, <clears throat> probably be another 20 or 30 years before it's going to need it again once you get the repair done. The goal though again is to avoid rain and water from sneaking in there, maybe from your sprinkler system. So you have to get rid of any crack. So now I'm just kind of painting over the brick on the edge to get rid of any of that concrete, that mortar mix, so that we can see a nice clean edge to the brick. That's important for the right look because that mortar mix will tend to want to get over more than it should and won't look as good. So that's how we do it. We have a lot of mix here and if this starts to get too dry it's still plenty wet but um, I can just add water and that's going to allow me to keep working without losing this nice mix. So I got a little crack here so I'm just going to pinch it and let that stuff use, since it's kind of wet, use gravity, a little bit of downward pressure to get it to fill the crack. But even a small crack left wouldn't be great because it'll allow water to sneak in there and that will cause that expansion problem again and then you'll end up with uh, maybe more cracks. So you can see right now, the initial treatment here, it, it doesn't look good. It's just lumpy and it's inconsistent. But this is just to kind of start to fill the gaps. And I'll use my finger to smooth it out a little bit initially. And I'll finish it with my finger in some water or maybe the moist sponge to get it smoother. But this is just the preliminary step, just feeding it in. You have a depression where a stone came out. You can add a little bit of your mortar mix into there too and then smooth it out later so that looks a little better. So these are expansion joints and they're cracks that you really don't want to mess with. You don't want to fill those because that is supposed to allow a little bit of movement with the big it's almost like tectonic plates with the big chunks of concrete. And if you fill those up, then you lose that ability for expansion and contraction. Okay, so we did probably a foot and a half, two feet. And now we can start thinking about going to the fresh water. And we can start to smooth it out. So if you have kind of sensitive skin, you may want to think about not doing this without a glove because 
the alkaline uh, level of concrete does mess with your skin It'll dry it out my skin's kind of dry already so it's not not a big deal and again you can just use some kind of moisturizer when you're done so I'm just using a little water to use my finger to get it make it more uniform to spread it out and the crack has disappeared so this is a nice way to renew your brick I'm going to the sponge now I'm going to get it kind of moist and I'm thinking about the brick can I make the brick be more defined by kind of painting away the mortar that got on the brick that'd be good there we go I can also consider this side of the, the seam too to kind of even it out with my in a light pressure with my finger that's pretty good So, depends how much cracking you have. I have a lot of cracking, but you could, within a few hours, probably repair your whole property. A little harder uh, because it's such a small area and we don't want to really overlap the brick. So we're going to just pinch it really small, try to feed some of that in there. We already got the end of it filled in. The end was, was all pretty much missing. So we're going to just try to avoid the brick though. Feed some in. So the premix stuff again is not as not as good, I think, because it's more expensive and it doesn't let you mess with the consistency. Because again, I've I've made this a little bit more runny than is traditional and that's just so it has a better ability to get into these really small cracks the other thing is some of the premix stuff is a bit rubbery so it doesn't really match when it dries um, you might even be able to match color but it looks weird it looks like that you can definitely tell well that's that's a patch job that isn't the original Whereas with this stuff, this is the material that they use. This is this is the brick mortar. So when it dries, you shouldn't be able to really tell. So that's that crack is essentially gone now. Now I want to think, okay, let me get rid of any excess that's near the brick. Because brick looks really good when you have uh, the nice contrast between. Fill this depression in a little more. You have a nice contrast between the brick and the mortar. But if it's in, indescript, you know, if it's kind of a blurry line, it doesn't look as good. Get my hands rinsed off. Okay, here we come with the sponge now. So this is just a moist sponge. And this idea is just your like you're painting the edge of the brick and that's that what it does is just removing any of the extra mortar that got on the brick that's to try to make that brick pop pop more okay that's pretty good we'll do the other side of that There we go. Now I'm coming back to the idea of smoothing out the mortar joint. What gives you the smooth is the addition of, of water. And this is done uh, soon after the application. You don't want to let it set up for too long because then It'll keep that rough appearance. So 
I'm bringing this seam out toward the lawn. Go. Come toward me again. All right. Let's see if I need to use my my sponge again. It's going to dry really nice. All right, doing good. We're gonna to move to the next one. So when you get these cracks, in it, inevitably some debris will fill in there. In this case, debris and a little moss. So you can use a screwdriver would work fine to get some of this stuff out before you try to patch it. If you get rid of all the uh, moss and you get right down to the mortar joint, it's going to stick really good, but if you have something in the way, like dirt or mortar, I'm sorry, dirt or moss or something, plants, it's not going to stick. So a wire brush could really help too. This one you got little chunks of stuff in here. I'm going to see if I can get a lot of this out before I fill it. There's just chunks of old mortar and leaves and dirt, but that kind of stuff gives you a uh, not a very uniform uh, surface for your mortar to, to bind onto, so you won't get a very good joint. Probably get cracks again pretty quick. It's always surprising how well life just grabs on wherever wherever it has a spot. How grass and things, weeds can just grow almost anywhere. So there's a spot we're going to repair right there. That's that's a preliminary problem before it becomes too big of a problem, and we'll fill this gap too. Our material still looks fine. We can see it still has a wet appearance, but that will go away, right? Over time, within about 10 more minutes, it's gonna start getting dry. And then, that's okay, I can just add water. I can even take water from my rinse water here, add it in, and keep that uh, stirred up and wet, and we'll be good. All right. Let's add a little bit to this hole right here. This is a really minor patch, right? Right, just just trying to get rid of that depression. <coughs> add a little water to it. Yeah, just take a second. So that one is filled. That's done. These bigger ones now, we're gonna take a bigger pinch of material and that's gonna fill it more rapidly. So technique is to start and then push it and pull at the same time. It's going to fill in that gap. But if that material goes down, say, at least half the distance of the brick, that will be great. If it's just like a, 
quarter or inch or something, it's just not that strong, right? So it's more likely it, it'll fail again. You'll be back here within a year doing the same procedure. So you're really talking about <clears throat> maybe 10 bucks of expense and maybe three to four hours of your time and your landscaping will be vastly improved. If you're gonna sell your house, uh, you're gonna get a lot better offers because it's gonna look a lot better. And uh, in our case, we're not selling, we just, want to, we just want to enjoy a uh, nice looking yard. And I'm the type of person, if I go out and see this kind of thing, uh, it kind of wears on me. I'm like, I gotta take care of that, I gotta take care of that. And it's hard to relax, so it's good to get this stuff done, get it out of the way. That crack's almost gone. Okay, I'm going to add a little water to it. This is just to get it smoothed out, just using my thumb. I'll use a sponge here in a sec too for the for the sides to uh, get the uh, margins a little cleaner. Just working this stuff in. And you know we we've done a lot of work already, and we are only I would say 10% into that bag of mortar, so it's going to be great. If you got a 10-pound bag, I'm sure that'll take care of your cracks, unless you have just a humongous area. Now, if you do this kind of repair and you notice that within just a few years you've got a problem again, that could be due to some kind of a drainage problem in your property where you're just getting a lot of water pressure built up all the time. Maybe you're overwatering with your sprinkler system. Maybe um, you have a flooded area so the rain comes in and um, brings in too much puddling, too much water, and that causes, that water pressure causes things to move. But one thing to consider too that if you're seeing these cracks on your nice landscaping, it could be a sign that because something's going wrong with your drainage system, that you have flow underneath your property that's carrying away material and that could cause foundation problems down the road so sometimes these ornamental things that we take care of there's a deeper thing going on that should be addressed and that that could just be something to do with your property's getting kind of flooded and you could put in a French drain system, for example, not that hard to do, but that can take care of that flooding. So you think about like, well, I have these cracks. Is that just normal old age for my landscaping or is something else going on? All right, so we got that crack pretty much done. We're doing about two feet at a time. We're going to clean that one up a little bit and then we're pretty much done with this aspect because that already looks good. A little more gap to do and then this crack and that's it. It's a pretty big crack so a fair amount of material and I'm going to kind of wiggle it and pull to feed it into the crack. Do a little more here. And my material is still doing good. I will start to mix it though to keep it from setting up. Stuff is so cool, you don't want to really lose it to inattentiveness where it dries out on you. You can't use it. You 
you have to think too if it's a hot day um, this is all going to happen a lot faster so most people who do this kind of work you can do it whenever you want but most people do this kind of work if they can they try to do it uh, later in the afternoon or early morning when it's not as hot and that just gives you more time to work and then you are not going to get baked by the sun too while you're working Even though this is a small gap, it's enough to end up being huge over time because of the movement of the water. You can see this pretty sloppy right here. This is going way over the brick, but I'll clean it up with the sponge. It's just hard to get into these really tiny cracks. I'm going to get rid of some excess there. Put it back in with my material. Okay, a little bit of depression right there. Okay, feeling pretty good about this. I'm just going to clean it up now. This is where the water comes in. <clears throat> Smooth it out. Water's pretty cool. It's almost like uh, self-leveling. Just give it a little bit of downward force, work it into the crack. All right, we're gonna clean it up now. We have some excess there, so we want to get our sponge <coughs> clean. We're gonna paint that surface. So it's free of the extra mortar. Just looks a little ugly on this side, so use my sponge to get in there. <clears throat> there we go. All right, pretty good. We're going to go ahead and actually recover the area that was done previously with the wrong material, so it looks a little better. My material is getting a little bit dry so I'm going to add some water and then I'll mix that in get it workable again if you add too much water it's okay just add more powder make sure you really mix it well though because there'll be pockets that are extra dry in there so I got a crack in the brick too I'm going to use this really watery mix to get into that crack I don't want any cracks. And I'll wipe it all off with a sponge here in a sec, so you won't barely see it. But even that little hole right there, I want to pack that in. And I'm also covering up this previously done material because it's not a good color match or consistency match. Let's see if I can match this a little better. I have a crack there too. All right. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. 
Alright, this is the brick that had the crack in it, so we're gonna go over with the sponge, get rid of the extra stuff on the brick. Here's our crack. Pretty good match now. So I'm using my using the sponge to try to get rid of this extra mortar on the edge because this is really nice decorative concrete and I don't want to lose the nice decoration part of it. So I'm going to try to remove the mortar on the edge of this crack on this edge, and I'll try to come in on the other edge too. So otherwise, you'd see uh, a pretty big patch job, and we want to minimize that. But we do want to fill the crack. So I'm just trying to make these stones show up again by removing material. We're able to see more of the rocks now, that's good. Tiny bit of a seam. All right, it's a lot better now. <clears throat> We're gonna do this part too. Put in a little bit of the material. Working it into the crack. It's going on pretty wet. And part of that reason is uh, that the depression I'm filling is really minor, so I don't need it to be super thick. This area right here <coughs> we're going to work on is uh, the previous material, but I'm just going to essentially paint over it with very little of the mortar, just so that there's a better, better uh, match in color. Almost like paint, <clears throat> like uh, like textured paint. 
because this has a little bit of sand in it. <coughs> Create the texture. Now I'm going to get rid of some of the extra in there, smooth it out a little more. make those rocks pop more. All right, that's gonna be a lot better color match. And we're just gonna work on this part. So right now it's a bit rough. We're gonna use our water to smooth it out. to removal of extra either sponge so I'm just trying to make those rocks show up more and then on this side we we'll use it to wipe away material that's on the on the brick good. Let's clean up that brick. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.